Before this video starts, I want to say thank you to Immersaholic for taking part in the video and that he has made his own video of this battle here on his own channel. So you should definitely check it out after this video here. But with that said, let's start. Hello, Senators and Legates. Welcome to Total War Tactics. Today we are going to take a closer look at a tactic which has shown to be very effective in real life. But now we need to figure out if it's good enough for Total War. As you can see we are going to be doing this in Rome 2 with the Divided Impera mod enabled. We are going to be covering a tiny bit of historical context, the theoretical formation and how to execute it, the army composition, how to use it in game and lastly but not least how to defeat it. If there are any parts of the video you want to see, there are timestamps in the description for you to use. But with that said, let's introduce the tactic. The Oblique Order is a tactic older than Alexander the Great himself and although he used it to great effect, it was actually the Theban general Epaminandas who was the first to use the tactic in 371 BC, as far as we know. This specific tactic was mainly used by the Greeks in the antiquity until it became obsolete due to its weaknesses which we will cover later in the video. Moving on to about 1750, Frederick the Great succeeded to win many battles with the Oblique Order. If you want a great example of the best and worst parts of this tactic, I would suggest you take a closer look at the Battle of Rosbach, where two armies are facing off against each other, both trying to pull off an Oblique Order. And just before we move on, I want to mention that the most famous use of the tactic was from the Battle of Gagamela in 331 BC. Here Alexander the Great defeated the Persian king Darius, leading to the end of the Persians and the rise of the Greeks. But with that said, let's take a closer look at how to do this. So. There are a few ways to form up, but one thing that is for certain is that you will have one big battle line. Next up is choosing where you will have your oblique order and this is where you can start doing what you want. It basically you can have the oblique order be on either flank depending on your opponent and what you personally prefer. And now Epaminandas placed his cavalry up front. But if you want the oblique order to be your cavalry, you should probably put them out on the flank instead, where they're supposed to be. But in terms of how to use this, you will have your superior flank move around your enemy to attack them from the side, giving you superiority over the engagement. Meanwhile that is happening, your weaker side will try to deny any engagement for as long as possible until you can't escape it. And when your strong flank finally wraps up their first side, they will come around and help to deal with everything else. Simple enough, but it takes a lot of discipline and skill to pull off. So let's move on. During the time of Epaminandas, the application of support units, namely cavalry and skirmishers, were a sparse resource, but still they comprised a small part of the army, consequently we are gonna choose a faction with a suitable melee and spear infantry roster, but neglectable in every other area. So on this occasion, I've chosen the RDI. Opening at the weaker side we'll have two Lapotus swordsmen, moving up into the center we've picked Four Illyrian heavy spearmen. Concerning our left and strongest flank though, we are gonna have three Illyrian heavy infantry up front with four Illyrian elite Sikabaras formed into two ranks in behind. 
for our support units, we'll have four Braushi archers and two light missile cavalry. Our general is, as always, gonna be on horseback. Now, with the army chosen, let's begin the battle. We made our bleak order on the left flank as that is the one I'm most comfortable using. While Emetaholic formed up with the pikemen front line and melee infantry on both sides, as well as cavalry at the rear. As we got closer, our cavalry got forced back due to hails of arrows. Instead, they would reinforce our weak right flank, while our left would try to envelop his lines. As his infantry got close enough, we pulled back, denying any engagement as planned. Our right flank kept pulling back, but at this time his superior cavalry had reached our back lines, threatening with rear charges. We would delay them with our own cavalry, although it was only a matter of time before they broke as well. Our left flank finally got around to do rear charges, but at this point we were almost encircled, meaning we would have to engage the enemy. And with our general dead, our men didn't stand a chance. Before we change the topic to how you can defeat this tactic, I also want to show its effectiveness against the AI. This time the AI were playing as the Athenians, with a massive hoplite front line and 5 cavalry units. Our formation was the same as before, but this time the enemy cavalry would run after our horses, drawing them close to our spear infantry. They could take out most of them with ease. When it finally came to the infantry engagement, we pulled back while our Sika bearers got all the way around their formation. And with most of them surrounded and the rest not knowing who to attack, we easily destroyed the enemy without taking any major casualties, basically destroying the enemy without engaging half of our army. The over 1000 year gap between the use of this tactic is quite incredible. It is all because of how wars were fought and the equipment available at that time. Depending on your historical knowledge, you might have realized the similarities between the two time periods of the usefulness of the oblique order. In both cases, they were mainly fighting with one battle line. 
During antiquity, it was hoplites, but changed over the time into fire squads in the early modern era. Another thing they both had in common was that they were extremely effective from the front, but had major weaknesses in being outflanked. You see, the units being used had very low mobility, meaning they easily could be surrounded, which should be devastating to your tactic. This can, of course, be neglected if your flank with overwhelming numbers wins their engagement quickly enough to reinforce your retreating side. It is very risky, but I only mention it because it was done by Alexander the Great himself during the Battle of Guacamela. To round up the first way to defeat this tactic, maneuverability is key, meaning light infantry and cavalry. A second way to defeat the oblique order would be to have units in reserve to reinforce wherever the oblique order is taking place. And a third way to defeat this tactic is by hiding a few units on the side the oblique order is taking place to attack them from behind when they finally get engaged in combat. But to put my last verdict on the tactic, I would suggest using this against another army with a high number of infantry, but not against anyone who is bringing large quantities of cavalry like the steppe factions or Parthia. But with that said, I would like to say thank you very much for watching, and till the next time everybody, goodbye and spread happiness.